The final part of this section on density is bringing in density in relation to flotation. And we all know what flotation is. Flotation is the ability of one substance to rest on another. So all you've got to think about is maybe a cork in water or um, a sunbed on water. You know, one of these blow up sunbeds on water. Or you might think of a hot air balloon in the sky. If anything can rise above and rest on something else, then the reason why that can happen is because the density of the object on top is lower than the density of one in the bottom. Okay, so it's a very, very simple thing to remember. If something is on top of something else, it has a lower density. If it's lower down, it has a higher density. So the further down something sinks, the higher its density. The further up something floats, the lower its density. Okay, and that's what we're going to look at in this last section. Then I'm going to set you some questions to do to get ready for our live class on Thursday. And we'll correct these questions in the live class on Thursday. And we'll take any other questions that you may have that you want to sort out or have explained. So first of all, no two substances have the same density. Now, for example, if I was to ask you about your characteristics, what would you say? What would you describe? Wouldn't you try to describe who you are. You would describe the colour of your hair, you would describe the colour of your eyes, you would describe your height, etc. Okay, so you'd start to give a description of yourself. So the same thing in science. When we have substances, we like to describe them fully. Okay, and what we discover is that there are certain descriptors that identify a substance. So for example, if I talk about density, which is a descriptor of a substance, okay, no two substances have the same density. So therefore, there are people who are very, very highly trained who know if you tell them what the density of a substance is, they can tell you immediately what that substance is. So if you say, for example, oh, I found a substance that has a density of 1.42 grams per centimeter cubed, they'd say to you, oh, that's silver. They just know because there is no two substances have the same density. Now, there's a lovely another way to say that. And this is it. Density is a characteristic c h a r a c t e r s t i c of a substance now that's what we used to learn in school we used to be given questions like density is a characteristic of a substance discuss so you have to write an essay on it okay now you're lucky those days are long gone all you're going to be asked for now is to understand that there are no two substances with the same density and because the density value of a substance is unique, then we say that density is a characteristic of a substance. Okay, it's a lovely sentence that I want you to try and remember. Okay, so because of this, we can compare substances. Substances with low densities will always float upon those with high densities. So for example, the smaller your density, the higher up you're going to rise in terms of resting on substances. So I suppose flotation is a bit like resting on something, all right? When you blow up a uh, swim aid or one of these, what do they call them, kind of uh, swimming rings, the reason why you float is because the density of the ring is much, much lower than the density of water. So it sits on water and it's able to carry you as well. Its density is so low, okay? Cork will float on water because the density of cork is lower than the density of water. So if anything with a low density meets something with a high density, the low density goes on top, the high density goes to the bottom. That's what we call flotation. So for example, cork is 0.2 grams per centimeter cubed and water is one gram per centimeter cubed. Now, what does that mean? And I just want to refer back to yesterday's class. 0.2 grams per centimeter cubed means this. If you had a cube measuring one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, then you would have 0.2 grams of mass in there. Okay, so there's your 0.2 grams of mass, all those little dots. Okay, if you have water and one, a cube of water measuring one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, then you'll have one gram in there, which means you'd have a lot more particles of matter in there. In fact, you'll have five times as many particles of matter in there meaning it's going to be more dense so that's not 0.2 okay so that's what 0.2 grams per centimeter cube means and one gram per centimeter cube it means if you take a cube 
that has sides of one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, there will be 0.2 grams of matter in there. Water has one gram of matter in there. So you can see this is less this less, less dense. Ah, need new teeth. Less dense, and this is more dense. What mean? What does that mean? Well, it means the following: if cork has a lower density than water, then watch. Cork will. What's the word? Float on water and that's exactly what we're looking for so the cork 0.2 grams per centimeter cubed water one gram per centimeter cubed because that's lower it floats and because that's higher it sinks okay so bigger densities sink to the bottom smaller densities rise to the top so since water has a perfect density of one gram per centimeter cubed we can work out by comparison what substances will float on water. So just take a look at this diagram here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six objects, all arranged in order of decreasing density. Now, the one with the highest density, obviously, is at the bottom. So the syrup will have the highest density. The one with the lowest density will be at the very top, and that's your cork. And then what we can see is that depending on where they are in relation to the levels between the syrup and the cork, we can tell what their densities are. So here's what I can tell by this diagram here. Listen carefully. Cork has a lower density than oil, which has a lower density than the plastic block, which has a lower density than water, which has a lower density than the grape, which has a lower density than the syrup. Or put it another way, syrup has a slightly higher density than grapes, grapes have a higher density than water, water has a higher density than blocks, blocks have a higher density than oil, and oil have a higher density than water, or sorry, than, than uh, cork. Okay, so that's the way we read that diagram. So as we go from the top substance down, notice what happens. We're going from the lowest density, that's the cork, to the highest density. So we're increasing densities as we go down this diagram. Oil, which has a density of 0.83, will float on water since the density of water is one gram and oil has a lesser density. Syrup, on the other hand, has a density of 2.4 grams per centimeter cubed, which will sink in water because its density is greater than that of water. Okay, so that's what that diagram there tells me. The density of a number of substances in this question now are shown in the table below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you at rest. I want you to identify two substances from this list that would float in paraffin oil. I'm going to leave that for you to do. But what I'm going to give you as a hint is I'm just going to show you, well, how would I find out what substances float on water? So the first thing I want to look at is, okay, who floats on water? Well, there's the density of water. The density of water is one. Any substance that has a density less than one will rise and rest on water. So therefore that will float on water. This one will float on water. That will float on water, but that will sink. So that's a float, 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 and sink. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at the density of paraffin oil, and then I want you to look at the densities of all the other substances, and by comparison tell me which of those substances would float on paraffin oil. Very simple question. Take a look and answer it in your copies. So, what about a hot air balloon? Now, we've been talking so far about cork floating in water, and grapes floating on syrup, and oil floating on water, etc. But when it comes to a hot air balloon, it's not floating on water, it's floating on air. Now what's in the air? Well, air. So how can a balloon that is full of air float on the sky, which is full of air? And the answer lies in the first word of the tree that are on the screen at the moment. It is hot air, okay? Now I'm going to give an example. Here's a balloon, okay, my lovely balloon. And in this balloon, let's just say, there are five particles of matter okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to gently heat the balloon and what i notice is that it swells it gets much much bigger but it still only has five particles of matter see now here's what i want you to look very carefully in this balloon here which is cold the particles are tight they're kind of packed okay they're close together so the particles are close together. And if they're close together, what does that mean? That means that the density is quite high. 
okay so close particles means high density okay look at over here what do we notice this is the hot balloon okay and we notice that the particles here are very very well separated they're separated and because they're separated out that means we have a low density and low densities will always float high densities will sink ah so low density hot air will always float on high density cold air exactly so for example if you have your lovely hot air balloon so there's your basket there and then you've got your basket and you've got all your strings holding your balloon like that so your balloon is in here like that okay and you've all these strings holding your balloon in place and you've got a little burner here which is heating the air in the balloon the hot air is less dense than the cold air around it so therefore it goes up okay and that's extremely important in terms of density in gases and that's what I want you to remember so in gases all we have to think of is this hot gases are bigger so therefore the particles have more space meaning it's less dense cold gases are smaller so the particles have less space and they're more dense the result hot gases will always float on cold gases so that's the reason why the hot air balloon goes up okay now I have a nice little video on that that I want you all to look at and it's at the bottom of this one so when a balloon is filled with hot air it rises okay so there you can see the air is being heated in the balloon in here we've got a big space and we've got few particles see that so therefore the density in there is very very low on the outside however the particles of the cold gas are quite dense see that so if you look inside the balloon and outside the balloon what do you notice you notice that the air outside is more dense okay the particles are tighter together but in the balloon the particles are far apart so this one here has a low density this one here has a high density and what's the result the low density rises on top of the high density and the hot balloon floats that's it goes up into the sky okay the particles of hot air are more spread out than the particles of cold air so the density of hot air is lower than the density of cold air hence what density causes flotation that's it low densities float on high densities so the low density hot balloon goes up into the air and tries to rest on the cold air so the only thing you need to do to make sure that the hot air balloon stays up in the air is you keep heating the air in the balloon and as long as you keep heating the air in the balloon the hot air will keep the balloon up at the top of the cold air and it will keep it floating for as long as you need it to float now there's a video there that I want you to look at so go to your slides look up the slides click on that little video and watch the video about the hot air balloons only about 50 seconds long it's very very fast but it'll give you a nice idea as to why hot air balloons float in cold air okay so finally now one or two more little calculations before we finish this chapter completely and that is if we were asked to calculate the density of a stone now if we we're asked to get, if I handed you a stone and I said to you get its density the first thing that you would have to do is you'd have to remember what the formula is the formula for density is mass over volume so in other words if I wanted to get the density of a stone I would have to find its mass and I would have to find its volume and both of those things you should now know what to do for finding the mass and for finding the volume you should know what to do mass is easy you always take the stone where to the scales the digital scales in the lab and that will give you the mass in grams for the volume well it's slightly different it depends on the size of the stone if the stone is small enough to fit into a graduated cylinder by itself then you put a known amount of water in put in the stone and watch the water rise and the difference in volume is the same as the volume of the stone remember that okay but what happens if the stone doesn't fit in the graduated cylinder well if that's the case well then we don't use the graduated cylinder on its own if you can remember what do we do we use an overflow can so we take the overflow can which is like this little overflow spout in it like that and we fill it up to here with water we put the stone in 
we put a graduated cylinder underneath to catch the water coming out and the amount of water that comes out then is the same as the volume of the stone remember that and I showed you how to do that so we've got to be very careful if the stone is too big to go into the graduated cylinder by itself we use an overflow cam but if it fits into the graduated cylinder by itself we put it in we have to put it in very very carefully you don't drop the stone in if you drop the stone in it's going to go straight down through the water hit the glass bottom break the bottom and the whole graduated cylinder will break okay so we put it in very very gently put the stone in turn it at an angle and let the stone slide down gently into the water okay so whenever we need to measure the density of any substance we need to know its mass and we need to know its volume how could we get the volume of a stone well i told you already it depends on the size of the stone okay how might we measure its mass that's easy mass is always measured on a digital scales okay or a mass balance as they call it so how do we measure the volume graduated cylinder on its own if the smaller the stone is small enough or a graduated cylinder with an overflow can all right so from our chapter on measurement we know that a graduated cylinder is used to find the volume of the stone and a digital scales is used to get the mass so let's say for example in this question that the stone fits perfectly into the graduated cylinder here's two pictures now I want you to look at this so I'm giving you the mass and I'm giving you the volume if we want to work out what the density of this particular stone here is here's what I say density is equal to mass over volume okay what does that mean the mass is 200 grams why because the scales tells me and the volume oh when I put the stone in the volume has gone from 400 up to 450 the volume is the difference between these two now in the previous test I gave you last week some of you made the mistake you thought the density was the complete 450 no you look at the number that you start at look at the number you finish at and you take them away from each other so that gives me 50 mils and don't forget mils are centimeters cubed so that's 50 centimeters cubed and now it's very simple because 5 into 20 is 4 and units grams per centimeter cubed that's it that's how you get the density of a stone very very simple and if the stone doesn't fit into the graduated cylinder you use an overflow can to catch the water that the stone pushes out and then that water is the same as the volume of the stone okay so from the figures we told you already calculate the density i'm going to ask you to do it again yourselves anyway when you're going through the slides to make sure you understand it and what would we do if the stone was too big for a graduated cylinder well let's just give you a hint use one of these things overflow can with the graduated cylinder see okay how do we get the density of a liquid now solids are okay because solids you can throw them on the mass scales and then you can put them into a graduated cylinder but you can't pour water into a mass scales so how do i work out the mass of water if somebody said to me go and find the mass of um water find the mass find sorry find the density of water how would i get the density of water well here's the first thing if i want to get the density of a liquid i have to write down the formula density is equal to mass over volume okay now how do i get the mass of water do i pour it onto the scales and hope for the best no what about the volume of water well that's easy enough take a graduated cylinder put in a certain amount of water and just read it the mass poses a problem how do i get the mass of water and there's a bit of a workaround and here's what you do you take a graduated cylinder and you put the empty graduated cylinder on the scales okay let's say that the empty graduated cylinder has a mass of 250 grams then you put in a hundred centimeters cubed of water and you reweigh and this time it's 350 centimeters cubed or sorry grams so 350 grams ah, do that again okay so density is mass over volume the volume that's easy graduated cylinder mass we first of all we get an empty grad cylinder and we weigh the empty cylinder on its own on the scales and let's just say it gave me 252 grams okay then we add in 
a certain known volume of water and that into the graduated cylinder and we reweigh and now it goes up to 352 grams well straight away you can see what's going to happen if the empty graduated cylinder was 252 and the graduated cylinder now with a hundred centimeters cubed of water is 352 then the difference between these is 100 grams there's my mass and there's my volume so I bring both of these then back to the formula. It's mass over the volume. See that? Which becomes one gram per centimeter cubed. And in fact, water is the only substance that has a perfect density of one gram for every centimeter cubed. Okay. That means, by the way, if I had 10 centimeter cubed of water, I'd have 10 grams. If I had 100 centimeters cubed of water, I'd have 100 grams. So in water, the volume in centimeters cubed is also the same as the mass in grams. So keep that in mind, it's good to know. So what do we do? We can get the volume of the liquid using a graduated cylinder, we know that, but when it comes to the mass, it's slightly different, okay? Because what we've got to do is weigh a clean, dry, graduated cylinder, there it is, Add out a known volume of the water, in this case here. Find the mass of the beaker and the liquid. Subtract the two. And then you'll end up getting just the mass of the water on its own. Or whatever other liquid. You can do this for any liquid. It doesn't have to be water. But it can be any liquid. Okay. Then you use the formula. Density is mass over volume. So the volume of water in the graduated cylinder. Read it. Okay. That's how you get the volume. But to get the mass, you've got to dry the, uh, you've got to weigh the cylinder first, add in the 100 centimeters cubed of water, weigh it again, find out the mass, the difference in the two masses, that will be the mass you're going to use, and then read the volume of water that's in the cylinder and put it into your formula. Okay, now if somebody said to you, find the density of paraffin oil, the same thing. Weigh a clean, dry, graduated cylinder. Put in 100 centimeters cubed of paraffin oil. Reweigh, subtract the two weights. Get the mass of the paraffin oil, then divide it by the volume, which we said was 100 centimeters cubed, and that will give you the density. So we use the same procedure for any liquid. If somebody said find the volume of alcohol or find the density of alcohol, same thing. So no matter what the liquid is, you do the same thing. Find the mass of a clean, dry, graduated cylinder. Add in 100 centimeters cubed of the liquid. Reweigh the graduated cylinder with the liquid. Subtract the two masses to get the mass of the liquid, and then divide it by the volume of liquid that is in the graduated cylinder. That's the density of a liquid. Okay. What about a cork? What could we do with a cork? Well, we could put it on the scales, get its mass, perfect, we can do that. But how do we get its volume? Because as soon as you put the cork into the graduated cylinder that contains water, it floats on the top. The water doesn't move up, it's, it doesn't push the water out of the way. So we have to help it. OK, and what we do in a situation like that is we overcome the problem with a pin. So we do this. See, water starts off at 90 centimeters cubed. But notice when you put the cork in, nothing happens. The cork simply floats because its density is smaller than that of water. So instead, we get a pin and we push the cork under the surface of the water so that the water will rise up as the cork pushes it out of the way and the difference between the two so the difference between the 90 and the 102 that difference there that will be the volume of the cork so we use the volume of the cork together with its mass which is found in the scales like that in order to work out its density now i'm going to do this one for you okay let's take a look at this so using the information given find the density of the cork the first thing we do density equals mass over volume where do i find mass always on the scales so when i go to the scales and put the cork on i get 2.07 grams when i put the cork into water nothing floats take it out stick in a pin push it under the surface of the water ah the water goes up it was 90 it went up to 102 so that's a difference of 12 centimeters cubed so the volume of the cork is 12 centimeters cubed. So mass over volume, 2.07 divided by 12 gives me a density of 0.1725 grams per centimeter cubed. And now you can see why 
it floats on water. Water is one gram per centimeter cubed. Cork is 0.1725 grams per centimeter cubed. That has the smaller density, so that will float on the water. Okay, so I'll watch out for these little trick questions. And it's good to know how to get around the problems of flotation of the cork on water, or to get around the problem that we can't pour liquids onto a scales, how to get the mass of a liquid and so on. So finally, just two questions taken from the exam papers, and I'm gonna go through these with you, and then I'm going to leave you to do some questions, and the questions I'm going to ask you to do are from page 312 of your book, and it's the knowledge and understanding section, question one to eight. Now it's written in Google Classroom as well, but just to let you know in your textbook, it's page 312, knowledge and understanding question one to eight so let's just go through this question and the one after it a pupil measured the volume of a potato using the items of laboratory equipment labeled a and b now first thing name the items labeled a and b well a happens to be this container that the potato is in and notice it has a spout so a must be the overflow can the overflow can so that's a and b is this thing here which has marks on the side made of glass which accurately measures out a volume of liquid that is a graduated cylinder well done graduated cylinder okay part two the potato has a mass of 175 grams and a volume of 125 centimeters cubed calculate the density of the potato keyword density formula density equals mass over volume What's the mass? 175 grams. What's the, the volume? 125 centimetres cubed. So 175 divided by 125 comes out as 1.4 grams per centimetre cubed. Now, quick question. Why did the potato sink in water? Look at down here. Why did the potato sink in water? Well, the potato sinks in water because 1.4 grams per centimeter cubed is the density of the potato. Water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed. So therefore the potato has the bigger density, so it sinks to the bottom. Keep in mind, the smaller densities always go on top. So you could say the water is floating on the potato. That's perfectly true scientifically. The water is floating on the potato, or the best way to say it is the potato sinks in the water. That makes more sense as far as we're concerned. Okay, very simple question. Next one. A student set up the equipment shown to measure the volume of an irregular shaped object. When the stone was carefully dropped into the graduated cylinder containing water, arrangement B resulted. Calculate the volume of the stone from the information given. But the best way to do this is work out where did the water start? The water started there. Okay. Where did the water end? Well, the water ended up here. So we got a rise. See that? The water was pushed upwards because of the stone and it was pushed up from 70 to 90 which is 20 centimeters cubed so straight away that's its volume so the volume equals 20 centimeters cubed if the mass of the stone was 40 grams calculate the density here we go again what's density density equals mass over volume what's the mass in grams 40 grams what's the volume 20 centimeters cubed so what's the density two grams per centimeter cubed and even look at the last one what is the unit of density the unit of density is grams per centimeter cubed that is the answer and that's again the reason why the stone sinks because its density is bigger than that of water so we can say it in two ways the stone sinks in water or the water floats on the stone whichever way you want to put it okay that's the chapter finished. That's density done. Now I'm going to stop there because you've covered loads in this chapter and I'm going to ask you to make sure you go through the slides yourself. Okay. There are questions mentioned on Google Classroom that I want you to work through. And tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to have our live class and I'm going to go back over to two tables that I asked you to fill in in terms of density, but also I'm going to go through the questions that are in on page 312 of your book. And then when we've gone through that revision on Thursday, we'll have a quick test on density and flotation, and then we will begin a revision for our summer exams. So there's no more learning this year. That's it. We're done for this year. We have 
luckily we have finished what we wanted to do and we've got through it together so we're going to have a quick test on density and flotation and then i'm going to start a bit of revision so please think get your topics into your head what do you want me to go through what do you want me to revise tell me by email what you want me to revise and we'll try and work out a revision plan and then the summer exam you'll be glad to know is exactly the same as the test we've been doing it's going to be a multiple choice test on google forms but I want you to be very, very careful when you're answering them to make sure you answer them properly. But more about that later. So get busy, off you go, do the questions, and I'll talk to you on Thursday.